Eddie and Tracy, our guest. Dr. James, how are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me on the show. So we, you heard us there. You were on the hold, and you, and you see the um, – and, and Trace is pointing out that, yeah, everybody's concerned and coaches are concerned. The liability issue, if I was a coach, yeah. that would scare the hell out of me. It's major. And now, and now you've got kids who are lying about being hurt. Yeah, you know, it is a, a major issue, uh, and, and back in our day, I think it was an issue as well from personal experience. I know I played through injuries and, and actually suffered a severe leg fracture because I did play with the stress fracture, didn't know it was there, was taking Advil to mask the pain, and ended up having a career-ending injury. So problem in the past, problem today, 1.24 million kids went to the ER last year for sports-related injuries. So it is an issue that we do need to address. But isn't it funny, you bring up when you played and, and when Ed played, when I played, I mean, you didn't have the attention to injuries. And you brought up your, you hurt your leg. I broke my damn leg at 13 years old, ran into some fat-ass right fielder, John Nishinsky, snapped my leg. Okay, I heard it snap. Coach comes out, let's tape it. And I played three. I didn't finish the game, but I played another three innings. I mean, that's the stuff they used to do nowadays. But, but now I think people are focused. Coaches are focused on, hey, let's not push it with this kid. You're telling me that's not the way it is. Well, I think it's a combination of both. I think we're definitely more aware, a higher awareness of injuries, especially with concussions. Uh, we definitely have a higher level of awareness. But we also have a win at all, at all costs mentality. Uh, whether it be the uh, fanatic parent who wants their kid in there no matter what, you know, who's right. living vicariously through their child, uh, or you know, just the teenager who wants to be the big man on, uh, in the high school and, and wants to perform and everyone's watching. I mean, we've got high school sports on ESPN now constantly. So we have a win-at-all-cost mentality. High school coaches uh, are making big money, especially the ones at the national program. So there's a lot on the, on the line. And I don't want our kids, uh, their well-being, to be taken advantage of. Doc, is it even worthwhile to, to, to play sports as a, as a youngster? I'm talking about, hell, I started, I don't know when you started playing, but I started playing at four years old and, and going all the way through high school. And I played Major League Baseball for five Major League teams. So, I mean, I've got experience, but is it even worth it for kids? If you have kids, would you let them go out and play? Yeah, you know, I'm a huge proponent of sports, um, especially at a young age. Now, my wife and I have had a discussion on football because it is a tough decision at this point, yes, knowing yes. what the head injuries can do long-term right. well, yeah. these NFL players. Hey, Dr. James, through. you know what? Let me interrupt there for a second and just ask you. You said you discussed with your wife. Are you going to let – I'm having to assume you have a son. You're going to let him play football. Well, we don't have any kids yet, oh, but okay, we have okay. some nephews, and, oh, and they play. Uh, so we had the discussion, and, you know, my, my vote is yes, and her vote is no. Yeah. Well, Doc, uh, let me just say this. You've got to keep your pan pan strong. Make sure you tell who's the boss. Okay? Right. Uh, I'm not even going to touch that. that <laughs> yeah, you're better off not doing that. But, but at the know, end of the day, let me ask you this. I mean, to follow through on that, at the end of the day, who do you think will win this argument? Will you defer oh, to your wife? wife? That's what I'm So you will, let your, well, okay, you will defer. All right. But you yeah. know what, Doc? It's more than football. I mean, we talk about concussions on this show. We were talking about concussions going back years ago. Nobody was talking about it. But we're talking about, you know, coaches leaving kids out there to throw, you know, over 100 pitches and, and they're, you know, 10 years old. It's that kind of stuff. It's girls playing soccer, taking balls in the face. That kind of stuff, right? Right. And, and those are the things that we have to watch out for. Um, in order to prevent overuse injuries, you have to utilize proper technique, proper stretching, warm up, and you can't play multiple sports throughout the year and not take any time off. I think that's the biggest problem now. Kids will go from baseball to football to soccer to basketball and never give the body some time to rest. Um, you, you, well, Doc, we've, to rest and recover. we've also talked about this. I mean, there, you don't even have to play multiple sports. I mean, kids these days, I, I have a nephew who plays shoot, year round. I mean, it's year-round baseball. I don't know, how much, I don't know actually, how much time the kid gets worse. worse. Yeah, that's even worse, playing the same sport all year round because you're, especially if you're a pitcher or something like that, you're utilizing the same muscles over and over again. If you're having a variety of sports, then you can kind of rest the arms if you're going to play soccer, if you're, if you're playing football and you're a quarterback and things of that nature. So I think that's an even worse problem today is that there are AAU sports in, in the same sport all year long at a very high competitive level. Don't you think they should have pitch counts? And when Absolutely. you're talking about kids that are 10 years old, I mean, literally just 
just started the whole pitch count. I mean, it's crazy that for so many years it was built on innings and not pitches because so many kids' arms are, are just destroyed at a young age. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you got to have a pitch count. We have to watch these young kids. Their body's not fully developed. You know, they're at higher risk for ligament injuries uh, as a child, and those are really hard to recover from. Ligaments are avascular. They take longer to heal. Um, you, you have to have a pitch count. You have to monitor how these kids are pitching and performing, uh, and we have to be responsible. You know, it's our responsibility to take care of our children, our adolescents. Of course they want to play. Of course they want to perform, and they want to make their parents proud and their teammates proud. So it's the coaches and the parents' job to get together before the season starts and set guidelines. Oh, that's, that's interesting. What, what kind of guidelines would you set? Uh, they what are have we to say, about? Yeah, they have to say, okay, this is what we're going to do throughout the season. If, if someone has a concussion, you have to have a concussion protocol, just like they have in the NFL and the NCAA. You have to have a, a written set of rules to go through to make sure that these kids are not playing with concussions or whatever the injury may be. Where's that happy median, though, for the um – or to teach a kid to be competitive, to get out there, to play through a little bit of pain, and as opposed to, you know what, you, you, like you guys are talking about playing with a broken limb of some nature. Right, right. Yeah, that's, a little, that's a little, but you know, where is that happy media? I, I don't know where that is. And it is challenging because there is a difference between being hurt and being injured. And you never yes, want to play injured. Point, you know. But you don't want someone to, to sit down if they have a little you know, bruise or, or, sure. or take a dead leg. You, you do have to play through that. That's part of sports. That's part of the game. But you definitely don't want to play injured. And I think it's really the, the head coach's responsibility uh, and the parent's responsibility to make sure that the kids aren't playing injured. Because a lot of times these things happen after the game. You've got adrenaline flowing. Uh, you play through a lot of pain. And then afterwards, you're like, oh, man, my knee really hurts. My elbow is killing me. Then it's time to assess, get the proper radio, radiographs, proper x-rays, and make sure that the kids aren't playing injured. Yeah, Doc, I'm just curious. I just want to dive into your situation. You were talking about how you were injured at a young age, uh, hurt your leg. Uh, do you think you could have played Major League Baseball? Or, or, I mean, did you think you had the potential? I mean, it's well, got to be tough. I was a, I was a basketball player. Well, it's yeah, I was a basketball yeah. player, and I was recruited by D1 schools, and I never had aspirations of playing in the NBA. Um, I was realistic, but I definitely could have played D1 ball. Uh, and who knows? Uh, you know, I was 6'2", 180 my senior year, real thin mm -hmm. when the injury occurred, and, and you know, now I'm 6'3", 225. So you never know, but that wasn't my path. Uh, and everything happens for a reason, but I definitely did play through. Uh, I had a to be a tubercle fracture, didn't know oh, about it. Uh, severe pain right below the kneecap, the patella there, and just popped Advil and, and played through it, and then went up for a dunk and, and ripped the top part of my tibia off. So, it was, but, but, but you oh, got to think man. about it, Doc. Think about it. I mean, That's here rough. you, I, you probably had a shot, maybe at the NBA, and then to drop down and just become a doctor. <laughs> Well, I enjoy my career now. Um, it's very rewarding. And like I said, everything happens for a reason, and, and basketball wasn't my path. But um, I do want to make sure that our adolescents out there, uh, when they're hurt, tell somebody. Mm -hmm. You've got to tell somebody. You can't just take some ibuprofen or Aleve or Tylenol and, and, and play through it all the time. Hey, Doc, would you talk to us again another day? This is a lot of fun. You're, you're very good. Absolutely. Thanks Thank you. Thank you. Take care.